Hi guys, in this video um, I'll go over the new features in the latest version of FXGL, which is um, 0.29 at the moment. Uh, one of the exciting new features is that um, FXGL is now available through Maven Central, which is awesome because you don't need to um, specify any repositories anymore. You can just um, add a dependency on FXGL and everything will be loaded in whatever ID you're using. Um, so if you go to a central repository of Maven and just type FXGL, um, you'll find the coordinates for the latest version, which is 2.2.9. Uh, and um, this is all you need to add to your ID. Right, as for the actual features, um, I'll start with this first, which is a menu sample. One of the first things that you'll notice is, um, once the intro goes away, is the blurred background. So whenever a dialogue is open from now on, um, whether it's in-game, in-menus, um, the background will be blurred, meaning it signifies to the user that the game is expecting some kind of input from the user, and the dialogue won't go away until the user does something with the dialogue. Um, in this case, we'll need to select, um, as usual, our profile, and um, if I start the game, right, uh, yeah, there you go. We have the blurred background as well, so the game is also blurred. Um, as for other things, I've created a small demo, um, which is similar to the Towerfall game, and um, we won't be need it, um, needing this for now. Um, and um, I tried to incorporate most of the new features here so I can show um, so I can show them in one place. Right, so um, rotational collisions have now been fixed completely. Um, if you've done any rotational collisions before, um, you might have noticed there, there was some clipping. There was actually quite a lot of clipping because of a um, few bugs in there, which have now been fixed. And uh, yeah, so rotations now work. You can rotate entities, you can collide rotated entities with uh, non rotated entities, and everything just works. And um, if two entities have bounding boxes which are axis aligned, so um, the rotation is at zero then the standard bounding box collision detection will um, do its thing. As for rotations, as soon as the one of the entities is rotated, um, separating access theorem will start working, which means that you get the best of both worlds, um, one for performance, the other for um, actual precise collisions. If you want even more precise collisions, um, you can as always use the underlying physics engine, um, JBox2D. Now, um, right, um, I've also introduced the developer menu bar, which can be opened um, by pressing control zero. And this opens the toolbar that you can see. Um, and there are many things now. This is pretty much experimental at this stage. So it's likely to change. We can add entity to the game world. Um, directly, so we can actually um, do stuff dynamically within the game. Um, it's not as useful as it could be if we had some some kind of um, saving to a level, for example. So uh, think about editors that we might have in the future. So um, yeah, let's say 130, 30 here, rotation at 30 degrees color yellow so that will spawn an entity rotated at 30 degrees um, with these coordinates so we actually injected an entity into the game we can edit entities as they um, are as they exist in the world uh, i'm just trying to find my entity that i've just injected um, which has type none because all these have types, um, they were created from code. Right, so 
here's the position of the entity which we can change to 230 and um, it updates updates the whole thing automatically which is pretty cool you can change the rotation and at this point this is everything we can change and um, this will be updated in the future to contain essentially all of the components that you can change of an entity. We can uh, apply some post-processing filters like color adjust, um, hue, saturation, brightness. So you can play around with colors and then once you're done, you can print the values. So you can then reuse the, those values in the actual game um, as a post-processing filter. We can also now um, show bounding boxes, um, which also shows the uh, each individual hitbox, which is very useful for debugging purposes. So we can see that um, our player has a um, circular bounding shape. Um, and others have rectangular bounding shapes or bounding boxes. Right. Um, last thing is quests, which is this window here. This is a quest tracking um, system or manager uh, that can that manages quests essentially. You can add a quest, which is conceptually similar to an achievement. An achievement applies to the whole sort of game, whereas quests are sort of in-game rather than out, um, outside the game. And um, in terms of user interface, there's quite a lot of flexibility. You can change how these things look and you can change almost everything you want. Um, so this is a single quest. Um, these are arrows. Um, shoot arrows is the objective of that quest. Each quest can have multiple objectives. So here we have shoot arrows, jump, as being objectives of a single quest. So if I start this um, from the beginning so that I haven't completed anything, um, one is being timed, which is that one, I think, which will fail in a second. Yep, it did. And once it fails or completes, you can then remove it from the quest tracker. And so if we do the jump, um, this is now um, signifying that it's complete. An objective has been completed. As for this one, I'll just need to shoot arrows. We do 15 of them. This is now complete as well. And finally, the quest itself is now completed, which I can now remove as well. Um, let's complete all of them. So if I can just kill that enemy to complete this one. This is the quest name. Um, and a quest can be in three states, active, complete, or failed. If one of the objectives is failed, um, then the call quest is failed as well. So just kill the enemy and got the quest complete. Um, I just can can just remove it. And similar thing with other um, quests that I have currently, which are just repetitions essentially. You can close the whole window. You can open the window. Um, the animations are very smooth and nice. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. About um, major changes in the new version. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Um, if we go back to the menu, there is now a way of um, providing feedback directly to, um, well, me. If you go to, uh, if you're using the developer mode or debug mode, like, um, like this one here, then you can go to extra. And there will be a menu item here that says feedback. Um, and then you can choose whatever feedback you prefer. Google Forms will open um, Google Forms. SurveyMonkey will open a SurveyMonkey page that 
Central mirrors all these questions. There's about five questions. Um, it's very easy to complete. So feel free to do so if you are using SXGL or if you're planning on using it. Um, the whole thing is anonymous unless you want to contact me directly using email, um, which is also fine. So yeah, um, if you want to add a new feature or basically talk about stuff, feel free to contact me one way or another. And apart from that, um, happy coding and also happy new year.